So this video is going to be on um, platelet-rich plasma and a call for standardization. Actually, it's a, the reason I cover this is it's a review of uh, other studies, and it has to do with this big issue in the stem cell uh, research right now of lack of standardization. Everybody's got their own soup that they're cooking up and trying that. Nobody's, um, very few people are documenting it very well. So it's very difficult from a science perspective to figure out what's actually being done. That is one of the key problems with research right now. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things I want to cover just from a terminology perspective. When we're talking about platelet-rich plasma, we're not even talking about stem cell. Why is it included in stem cell? Um, because it's people started using this uh, at the same time they started using stem cell and seeing it as a, a similar thing. It's, it's body tissue from where the donor is the patient or the patient is the donor and you're getting some of the patient's body tissue, spinning it down, trying to find a concentration of healing material. In one case, it's stem cell. That's when they do the uh, MASC, marrow aspiration stem uh, concentration, stem cell concentration. That's, again, I'm focusing on knees right now. So that's usually coming from um, the top of the uh, pelvis, this area. That is more of a stem cell, at least a progenitor cell. What's the stem cell? What's a progenitor cell? And what is a platelet? Well, <clears throat> a stem cell is a cell that can self-renew. In, in other words, it can give birth to other stem cells. Once it differentiates and turns into like a skin cell or a cartilage cell or a blood cell, it can't go backwards. Now, <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite themes is it's not that simple. It's actually, that's not that simple anymore because we, have fig uh, we, the scientists involved in this, have figured out a way to induce stem cells. In other words, bring these never before to return back. So and that's called an I, um, IPSC, induced pluripotent stem cell. Then that gets into the issue of pluripotent versus totipotent. We'll actually cover that in just a minute. But that gives you a little bit of perspective of what we're talking about. We're just talking about a small slice of uh, the stem cell, the overall general arena or field of, of stem cells. Why are we talking about that slice? Simply because uh, this is where I found one of the uh, good meta-analyses demonstrating the need for um, documentation and standardization of processes. Now, a minute ago, I said, <clears throat> what's, I said pluripotent versus uh, tot totipotent, and I actually also made the point that a plasma cell is not a, not a stem cell at all. So these are stem cells. They can make, remake themselves. This is a totipotent stem cell, and it can remake, uh, go into anything. Pluripotent stem cells are not quite the same. They've already made some cuts, and they can go into some areas like these, but they can't go into others. So this totipotent stem cell could become any of these. This pluripotent stem cell could become muscle tissue, white cells, or red cells. Now, <clears throat> um, again, I mentioned a minute ago that plasma cells are not even, or plasmacytes are not really even cells. They don't have a, um, a cell nucleus. Biologically, you need to have a cell nucleus before you're a cell. Plasmacytes come from a larger cell. They're just tiny pieces of that cell that get broken off. And they float around in the blood to help create the clotting mechanism. So if we're talking about plasmacytes, what's the attraction of plasmacytes? How are they supposed to work? Obviously, it's not a, a cell that can replicate, and it clearly doesn't replicate itself. It clearly doesn't, and it doesn't even have a nucleus. Well, plasma cells are a major uh, container of growth factor. So that's the idea there, that you're spinning down, concentrating the plasma cells, and getting 
a concentration of growth factor. Now, <clears throat> let's go back. Remember this article is about, it's a meta-analysis, it's looking at all the research that's been done around standardizing protocols. What kind of protocols? Well, you know, how much blood do you draw for a plasma cell? How much do you spin it down? You may mention it, or you may remember me mentioning in a, an earlier video, the original uh, plasma-rich, uh, um, excuse me, I keep saying that backwards, not plasma-rich uh, platelets, it's platelet-rich plasmas. The original platelet-rich plasma it was just an increased concentration of plasma. They went to the Buffy coat, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, but there was no criteria. At this point, they have developed a standard. It should be more than 5 million of these platelets per cubic milliliter, or per milliliter. Uh, I think that milliliter is like a cubic millimeter or something. Anyway, so you've got a, you, you've got, uh, standardization around how to draw the blood, how to isolate it, how long to spin it, how to get um, the Buffy code off. Here's some diagrammatic stuff. Here, BC stands for Buffy code. Uh, as <laughs> you may or may not remember from another video I've done, they're actually you get all the white cells in this Buffy code. The other white cells, like leukocytes, polymorphonucleosides, uh, monocytes, eosinophils, those can also create significant inflammation. We don't want fl inflammation as part of the stem cell uh, tissue regrowth process. So then there's questions about, okay, how do you take out the other white cells and leave just plasma cells with the growth factor? And how much do you take out? Again, as you see, <clears throat> it ain't that simple. Um, <clears throat> but again, there's some things that we're, we're learning as we're going through this. Um, I mentioned Buffy coat. I mentioned uh, how long do you spin it. And again, the Buffy coat is the white. I thought I'd give you a picture of a real version of that. Now let's go back through the study. And again, um, I won't get too geeky for those of you who um, raise your eyebrows and, and uh, want to walk away when, when I start holding up these. Um, I will make a couple of points, though. There's, um, <clears throat> what they're saying is, look, it's a call for standardization in platelet-rich plasma uh, preparation protocols and uh, composition uh, reporting. It's a systematic review of the clinical uh, orthopedic literature. So here's the point. Um, what they did was they did a systematic review of all studies that they could find from 2006 to 2016, uh, randomized clinical trials only, so editorials, uh, non-orthopedic applications, uh, dental applications, all of that stuff was ex uh, basic science articles, how to do it, what it means, all of that was excluded, just randomized clinical trials. They found 105 studies and 104 articles. What that other study was, I, I, I don't know. But out of that, only 11 actually provided clarification regarding the stuff we just talked about. How long do you spend it? How much of the Buffy coat are you getting? How much are you pulling off uh, when you originally get the sample? How much of the how many milliliters in Buffy coat, how much are you injecting, all of those things, only 11 studies actually talked about that. So now are you beginning to get an understanding why uh, this, the research, you know, the field may be moving fast because everybody's out there doing their own thing. But the actual science behind stem cells is going frustratingly slow. We've got a major opportunity here. It's just, again, everybody's using their own little soup with their own little processes. And um, then they inject it, and patients who, a lot of patients have very high expectations, and they say, yep, yeah, I'm cured, or at least it helped a whole lot. I hear that a lot from patients. When you do things, though, like um, 
double-blind clinical trials looking at both knees, maybe the, the results not quite so good. Um, so we got a lot of opportunity and a lot of frustration in this area. Is there anything else? Um, no, I think that covers it. Thank you very much for your interest.